Joining me now from Washington is Eleanor Holmes Norton. She is the non-voting delegate to Congress representing the District of Columbia. Congresswoman, nice to have you back on the show. Um, I know you believe the high court got it wrong today, but let me ask you this. Aren't there ways of enforcing the Voting Rights Act, uh, to name one, lawsuits without subjugating these nine states, um, subjecting rather, subjecting these nine states to this intrusive federal oversight? Yeah, you're speaking of, of Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act, which applies nationwide. Uh, so you can bring a suit, and after the election's all over, of course, you may win it. The reason that we have Section 5 and the formula uh, that comes with it is that what a Southern and some other states have tended to do is to make changes in laws uh, shortly before elections. Uh, and if they keep doing that, uh, and, and you have to go in after the fact, of course, you never catch up. Uh, but, so what the court did was to make the pre-clearance section section four. Uh, no, the pre-clearance of the one that we all we, we all thought the section five, which mm -hmm. is the pre-clearance section where certain states have to pre-clear all their laws. We thought that would be struck down. Instead, they struck down the formula. Now, mm -hmm. what that is is a wild pitch in my judgment, mm -hmm. but it's landed right in the two chambers of the Congress because we can fix the formula. Mm -hmm. They didn't say it was unconstitutional and could not be fixed. They said the formula relied on old data. And they implied that if it had been better data, then perhaps some of these states would no longer be included. Right. But of course, that belies the facts. The fact is that the formula worked, and these are the very states that we have found time after time were continuing to use the to to to, to block the, the the rights of right. minorities in the South. Right. They're saying specifically it needs to be contemporary data, and perhaps that's something that Congress uh, c c can do and can find. But but I want to just play this because this is this is the lawyer who argued the winning side of the case. He, like who I just quoted, uh, Chief Justice Roberts, seems to believe that this 1965 enforcement standard is out of date. The American South long ago laid down the burden of racial disfranchisement and has integrated African Americans and minorities fully into its public life. I, I think I hear you laughing. Um, <laughs> what is your reaction to that, Congresswoman? If that's the case, why do we have so many uh, statutes that have been thrown out, have to be blocked, and have to be pre-cleared? Yes, the South has changed. And guess why it's changed? Why? It's changed because of the Voting Rights Act, which, which of course, the court has now said we must revive if it's to be revised, if it's to be useful or to us. I think we can do that. And my challenge is this. I remember when we um, reauthorized this act in 2000. I've never seen anything like it before or since. How come? Every member of the leadership stood on the on the steps steps of the Capitol with every member of Congress behind them saying, we have together enacted this law. So I challenge uh, my Republican colleagues, Mr. Boehner, Mr. McConnell, who were on those steps that day to fix this formula so that we can do what they said they wanted to do and that is to make sure that every person regardless of color ethnic background has the right to vote what about and I think I know your answer but I just have to ask you know the critics who said look we you know as a nation we've elected Barack Obama the first african-american president and we re-elected him why is this necessary in these nine states in 2013 well, yeah. well you know the court cited uh, uh, voter turnout of course we had voter turnout in no small part because we had a uh, the first black man uh, running for president. But the fact is that voting, uh, voter turnout is not the only basis to judge whether or not uh, the, 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 the southern states and other states are engaging in practices to keep people from voting. Hmm. I mean, what, what, what are we to do about the Alaska natives, for example, who found that their voting place had been changed uh, before an election so that the only way you could get there was by sea or by air. Hmm. Well, voting after the fact won't deal with that, and yet that was done with this formula in place in, in Alaska. Well, it's a challenge to us. Could have been worse. Section 5, the preclearance section, could have been found unconstitutional. This is a majority that I believe wants to do that, but since it's given us the chance to fix the formula, that's what we should what we should do now. It sounds soon as possible. like you accept the challenge, Congresswoman. Congresswoman <laughs> Eleanor Holmes Norton, a pleasure. Thank you so much.